Hello everyone, this is Nicole and welcome to a brand new video tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by. In today's video, I wanted to share my coloring process using the Faber Castell Polychromos. I am going to use Alton News Garden Treasure Stamp Set and also a paper from Arches that is 140 pound hot pressed watercolor paper. I'll go into more details on this paper later on in this video. It is a 9 by 12 sheet that comes in a pad. So I took out one sheet out and then I'm going to cut this in half so that I can just uh, size down my work surface and then you can save the other half sheet for later on. I'm only taking outline images from the set. I'm taking the big petals and the leaf and one of the smaller petals. I ended up not using all of them, but I stamped it to cover it enough on my half sheet of watercolor paper and I can save the other portions for another project. I, I'm stamping these images using the silver stone ink pad from Altenew as well. So this is a polychromos color pencil that you see. This is actually a 120 color set. This is a full set. I started with 36 color set when I tried these colored pencils for the first time. And I've been using it for a while and I've been really loving it. I actually have a video comparing these along with Prismacolor pencils. So if you want to check them out, I will link them below so you can see them in uh, action. But these are oil-based color pencils, which I love because you can layer a lot of colors on top of each other without getting any of those wax blooms or running the tooth down of the paper too much. So I'm going to be picking out a few shades of blues, grays, and purples. And I'm going to start with one of the flowers and starting with the lightest blue shade. Notice that I am sharpening the color pencils first using some electronic pencil sharpener. I'm using Darwin brand, but you can use whatever that works for you. I love polychromos. One of the main reasons that I really love is because when you sharpen the tip of the color pencils, the polychromos retain those shapes really, really well and it lasts a long time. So you don't have to sharpen these too often when you're working on your project. So I, like I said, I'm starting with the lightest color. I'm going to show you a real process a time when I'm coloring this for the first image. And then as we go on with the project, I'll speed up so you can see other coloring in faster mode so that you can still see them, but you don't have to watch them in real time. It took me about 20, 30 minutes to color these. Um, maybe not that long, maybe 15 minutes. I can't remember exactly, but anyway. So I laid down the first color and as you saw, I flick the color pencil so that instead of rubbing it all over the section of the stamped images, I went lightly with a very light handed and layered colors that way. I wanted those the strips of color pencil strokes to show through with along with the white part of the watercolor paper. So it is totally a personal preference, but I wanted these textures to show through because this adds a really fun interest onto your project. So I hope you give this a try. So I lay down the first one, I'm laying down the second shade right now, and then you can always go back with the first shade to kind of blend those out together. If you want those whites not showing through from the paper, you can always use a burnishing technique where you go really hard or really, what do you call it, um, lay down the colors heavily on the paper by going with the color pencils in cir circular motion. So that way it lays a lot of colors and you don't see those white parts of the paper. That is totally up to you, like I said. So I'm going to go ahead and now lay the third shade. As you can see, it's now building up the shade on top of each other and creating those light to dark shading effect. And you will see that as I lay down more colors, you will see less part of the white portion of the paper as well. So when I work on the projects with colored pencils, I like to work on in sections. So this is why you're seeing that I'm only working on the bottom portion of the flower for now, and then we'll move on to another section of the flower after this. 
If you want to create a little bit more shading, you can either layer more of the same color on top of each other, or you can go into uh, with another darker color. Another thing that's really great with uh, Faber Castell is that because they are oil based and you can layer the colors really easily and you can layer a lot of colors on top of each other, you can create a different shade that you may not be able to find it from the set that you have. So I definitely, definitely encourage for you to try and play with the color pencils going light mode and going hard mode and see what effect you like the most. Flicking happens to be one of my favorite technique to use and if I want a little bit more of opaque results I would go around and lay down the colors like this a little hard like I'm doing over here or I would go into a circular motion and create a burnishing effect. So as you can see the uh, first portion of the color pencil is all done. Now I'm going to speed up the process so you can see the rest of the petal being colored and you'll be able to see the other um, area that I'm coloring in of the other stamped images. If you do make a little bit of mistake, you can always take in a nice eraser. I would recommend a good quality white eraser to erase off of those pigments. They come off really easily as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the paper that I am using. Earlier in this video that I mentioned that I am using 140 pound hot pressed watercolor paper. When I'm watercoloring, I like to use cold pressed watercolor paper most of the time. I love using hot pressed watercolor paper for colored pencils. I find that it is smooth enough, yet it gives me a good surface to hold on to those pigment from the colored pencils and hold on to those textures that I want to create. It has enough tooth where it allows me to do so. I love using this with polychromos and also the Prisma colors. I love mixing and matching those color pencils together when working on a project as well. So make sure to try out different types of papers. I highly encourage you to do so. If you want to try out the Nina Solar White that we often use when making cards, definitely try that and see what results you can get out of those papers. Also try a watercolor paper, hot pressed, cold pressed, and try out other types of papers and see what works best for you. So you can check out these different results that you can get so that you can also maximize the mediums that you have and express the textures that you want to express throughout your projects. So after the first one is all done, I'm going to move on to second color. And this is shades of purples that I am choosing. I chose three different shades. For the blues, I ended up using four shades and then went with a very dark navy blue to create a finer sh a shading and darker portion of the uh, flower. But with the, blue, uh, with the purple, I'm going to use only three shades and using the flicking motion. For the lightest purple, I actually went a lot softer and less textury. So I just kind of went over the whole area with a smoother surface effect. And for the second and third, I'll be using a flicking motion to create those, those details and textures on the flower. So after those are all done, I'll be back with a more explanation of the project as we finish off the card. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed some music and coloring using the purple color shades and also using the gray shades for the leaves. I really wanted to create a monochromatic feel of the card for today's project. So I hope you enjoy them and I will be back after coloring is all done.
I hope you enjoyed watching my coloring process and hope you really give it a try. After the coloring is all done, I'm going to cut out these images. I ended up coloring two of the big flowers and three of those leaves that we stamped on a hot pressed watercolor paper from Arches. I cut out using the coordinating dies and using my Platinum 6 die cutting machine from Spellbinders. I'm going to go ahead and dress up my background card front. This is Soft Lilac Metallic Shimmer from Altenew, and I'll be also using Ocean Waves Metallic Shimmer from Altenew as well. Make sure you shake them really well. Instead of spraying them directly, I'm just taking out the nozzle and tapping on the tip of the nozzle so that you can create a drop of splatter, uh, color splatters for the background. After those are fully dried, I'm going to go ahead and place our colored flowers first. I'm using foam tape to add some fun dimensions. I added a one layer of foam tapes on the blue, which will be going on the back portion of the card. And for the purple colored flower, I'm adding two foam tape, two layers of foam tape so that you can have added dimensions on top of the blue flower that's going behind of the purple flower. So for the bottom portion of the flower that's touching the card front directly, I added two layers. For the portion that touches blue flower, I added one layer of foam tapes. I'll be also doing the similar thing with the cutout leaves. For the first couple of ones, I'm adding directly onto the paper using some adhesive tape from Altenew. This is a glue tape that you get three packs in one, uh, three, three of them in one pack. So I'm adding two of them onto the card front flat and then the last one that I'm adding I'll be adding with some foam tapes to add some dimensions. So there's lots of dimensions and lots of textures going on in this card. For the sentiment, I wanted to keep it really simple, so I'm taking Bejeweled Stamp Set from Altenew, took out this Thinking of You greetings, stamped it with Jet Black Crisp Ink Pad, and stamping it onto a top right portion of the card front. Now all we need to do is assemble the card together. I'm going to adhere this card front flat onto our card base. Card base is Nina Solar White. 110 pound cardstock and that finishes the card for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video tutorial. This is a really fun coloring technique to try out and use. So I hope you give it a try and let me know what you think of water or using the watercolor paper you with color pencils. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, give uh, hit get, hit that subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. All the supplies that I use in today's video are listed below in the description below in the box. You can also go to my scrapsandstamps.com website to see a full surprise list. There is also a giveaway, so make sure to check out all the details in my blog. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.